following day, I have a meeting with Musrat Mizba, the owner of Pakistan's largest chain of beauty salons. Once inside, you could be in London, Paris, or New York. I mean, the clientele, the models, the products, everything is top-notch. But the hairdressers and makeup artists are special. They've all been disfigured by acid thrown at them by a husband, a father, or a brother. Wow, so what, what, is, what is this place? This is our salon. This is where my girls are working. Um, these are the girls uh, who had the, you know, the intentional acid throwing on them or they were burnt. So they are now working. So girls are and then they come and work for you, right? Yes, yes. I mean, this is what they want to become. They wanted to become beauticians and hairdressers. So Sarah is uh, one good hairdresser. And then, um, you know, she's very popular amongst the clients now. Sarah and went through 18 operations before working here. I remember it was a Wednesday in 2003. My fiancé came to the house in the afternoon and I was home alone. He asked me to go for a walk with him. I told him I wouldn't leave the house without my parents' permission. After seeing that I wouldn't go out with him alone, he asked me for a drink of water, so I went to the kitchen to get him some. When I came back, he threw acid in my face. I started screaming. The pain was unbearable. My neighbors took me to the emergency room right away, and I received treatments there for two years. For the past three years, I've been getting treatments thanks to Mozart. She sent me to Italy to train as a beautician, and I stayed there three months, and I also received training as a hairdresser and massage therapist. I've already been working for a year here at Depolex. And so how did you get the idea of, of doing all this? How did it start? Mm, it just happened one day. You know, they, I was, uh, there was this girl who came in and... Um, in your salon? In my salon. And she was, she was wearing a veil. So she said, I need your help. And I said, okay. I, I said, what can I do? And she, you know, unveiled herself. And I was standing and I, I thought, there's no life in my legs. I sat down because I saw a woman without a face. I saw this young girl who had nothing on her face. I said, okay, all right. You know, I said, yeah, I will definitely help you. The, the next thing that I did was to place a little advertisement in the newspaper saying that uh, if you are an acid or kerosene burn victim, get in touch with any of my salons. And they came from all over the country. And and I thought to myself, you know, I mean, how would I help them? How, how will I be able to, you know, do surgeries for them? So I got in touch with the Italian uh, organization, mm -hmm. which was already helping in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Got things together, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is not just happening in Pakistan. Since then, 232 women have walked in her salons. Here at Depalex, no one has ever made me feel that I was not beautiful. I've never felt any different from the others. I'm absolutely normal, and I also am beautiful. Thanks to Maserat, we are completely normal and able to have a social life just like anyone. It's a very good answer. Yes. She's very confident. Yes. She's very confident. Very, yes. very confident. And uh, like she said that, you know, she, is, uh, she can face society just like all of us can. Mm -hmm. yeah, because she has the tools to yeah. do this. Yeah, she has the skill, she has the courage, she has the determination, and she knows that smile again is always there. Now, well, we'll need all the courage she can get. At 22, she was to become an air hostess. Her husband couldn't tolerate it. Musarat wanted me to visit her in the hospital. Inshallah. She doesn't want her children to see her. That way. That way. So, you know, she wants to just get better. When she was burnt, um, she won't let her children come near her. Even we won't like the children to see her in this condition. Yes, of course. Because that gives a very... Uh, you know, uh, difficult. difficult the children for the don't children. Even recognize their mother? No. Because they're supposed to smile to her. Yeah. So, Joe. 
Yeah, she's saying just send me abroad. Send me somewhere where they can just, you know, bring me back to my normal self. And the father, was the father arrested? No. There's a little problem because it's a family. It's a family feud, you know, the husband has done it. So most of the time the husband would ask for forgiveness. landed in uh, Skardu, we're at 7,000 feet more or less, beautiful day, a little less oxygen here, but my favorite thing here at the airport is a little welcoming sign for the tourist. Before the explosions of the Twin Towers, before the London attacks, basically before Al-Qaeda made the world tremble, this region was paradise for long distance travelers. No wonder they can't find Bin Laden. Look at this place. <laughs> this guy is going full speed. Oh, uh, <laughs> man, I, I don't know how he does it, but I'm left in the dust here. I'm coming. So this has to be one of the most gorgeous places I've ever gotten to see on Earth. And it's a real shame because this place has been taken hostage. Basically, there are no more tourists that come here. And this place was in the 80s, one of the biggest tourist attractions of Pakistan. But down in this valley are Taliban. On this side is Kashmir, you know, where it's fighting with India. And over there is the border with uh, Afghanistan. And it's a real shame that this is happening because this place deserves better, deserves more. And these people are taken, as I said, hostage by the situation. Take the Shangri-La, for example, a five-star hotel nestled on the shores of a mountain lake. It provided a livelihood for the entire valley. No one comes here anymore, much to the despair of its manager, Mr. Khan, who's had to lay off three quarters of the staff. And so, who are some of the uh, of the famous people that came here? We were all kinds. We, well, starting from the Aga Khan and all the presidents, our present presidents. Musharraf, uh, all the prime Pakistan ministers. Yeah. Everybody comes and stays here. And stays here. Nights. Uh huh. Benazir was here. Benazir was here. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the president stays there. Musharraf, that's his room on the right. That's his room on the right yeah. over there. Yeah. The green one. It's okay. Summer residence. Summer residence. One night. <laughs> <laughs> it's like rowing in Central Park, just better. Bandai ki kya? No, this is like, it's like Switzerland on steroids or something. On steroids, that's <laughs> right. Correct. So, what happened after 9-11? Most of our hotels are about to close. Mm -hmm. Not only the hotels, the tours, uh, the tour operators, they did not get any business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking twice now what to do. Mm -hmm. Should we pack up and go into something else? Because there was no income coming in from the foreign tourists. But the people don't, first of all, know about Pakistan. Yeah. Is it India? Yeah. Is it Pakistan? Yeah. And what is Pakistan? Uh -huh. Mullahs or Taliban or tourism, which is not, which is absolutely incorrect. There's a certain part of Pakistan where these problems are going on. Uh -huh. It is not the whole of Pakistan. The whole of Pakistan. So, 
what about security? Because when people think, oh, you're going to Pakistan, like my mother, for example, yeah. she's like, Thank oh my God, my son, you, you where, are you going? where are you going? You know? No, no, it is safe. It's safe. It's uh, certain areas of the northern northwest frontier fro province linked to Afghanistan, mm -hmm. where the problems are. Yeah, trying to resolve them mm -hmm. by sitting and having jirgas. Yeah, jirgas. negotiations. But northern areas are safest. Yeah, never heard of any crime. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No murders, no robberies, nothing. Yet. Nothing, yeah, yeah. So, it's very, very so it safe. must be frustrating to have a very safe place and people and thinking people that thinking it's... the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely, you're right. What about photo city color? Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you never had any threats either from mullahs never. or something saying you have no. Westerners here and so on no, and so forth? No, no, they're, they're depending on us. Mm -hmm. They know exactly. They've started cable TV now. Yeah. The mullahs are watching this. <laughs> so th there's an evolution also. Uh, there is an evolution, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Definitely. From the mullahs. Definitely. And above all, behold what it was that made this region a truly unique place on earth. <laughs> Always with a lot of grace, my movements. <laughs> oh, I'm too heavy. Let's see. Well. <laughs> So we're here on some random hill of this, the Himalayas, and yeah, I can barely breathe. What's the, excuse me, what, what's the altitude here? Yeah, 4,800. 4,800 meters. <laughs> it's, 4, 000, it's like, it's the height of the Mont Blanc in, in Europe. It's the tallest mountain of Europe. Well, what's the... What's the highest point you've ever been? 8,000. 8,000 meters. 8,000? 8, yeah. <laughs> 8,000. So, my friends here are high altitude porters, guides in the Pakistani Himalayans. Unfortunately, in these past few years, they haven't had too much luck with, uh, with tourists. <laughs> so before 9-11, uh, more business, no? Yeah, many tourists. Many tourists, yeah. But it must be frustrating uh, to be training for so many years to go up in the mountains and not have business anymore. Yeah, before we get, uh, we are uh, a special uh, training we get uh, and then uh, many courses we join for the become a good uh, guide and mountaineer uh, after uh, 2011 yeah. uh, it's uh, the tourist ratio got down Not and down. we uh, jobless jobless huh? and uh, no job and we are worried about uh, the future the, the future yeah. Very good. Very good. <laughs> you teach me good yeah. teacher <laughs> Oh, it's very beautiful, yeah. Very nice mountain, highest mountain, very uh, nice snow altitude. I wish more people come here. And visit, yeah. Visit. yeah. See here. Okay, guys, this is the uh, the end of the trip, the end of the line in, uh, in Pakistan. can barely think without the oxygen. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you in another country soon. Bye-bye. Now we, what, we have to go down.
que je ferais pas pour être à la télé. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. <laughs>